I want to point out, if we're looking at the equation y equals a times b to the x, if b is greater than or equal to 1, it is growth. But if b is less than 1, it is decay. And I know this might look slightly different than um, the way you've seen the exponential functions done before, but we're going to use this a lot. So I need you to know this. We've got a is my initial function when um, x is 0, my initial point. And b is telling me the rate at which it changes. And x almost always has to do with time, but it's whatever your um, independent variable is. So let's look. We're going to do a couple problems from your sheet. We're looking at number one. Okay, so whenever you ask me when are you going to use this in real life, this is it right here. Growth and decay functions are very important for real life. You're, most of you in here are going to buy a house or a car or something someday, and you need to know about appreciation and depreciation and uh, what you want to pay for things, um, and when you want to sell them when they're still worth something. Okay, so we're looking right here at a house costs two hundred thousand dollars. It will appreciate in value by three percent each year. What do you think that means? Appreciate? Is it going up or down? Up. So it's causing growth. Let's work on this too. Let's change that 3% into a decimal. What is it going to be? 0.03. We're going to write a function that models the cost of the home over time. Use x for years and y for the value of the house in dollars. So we're going to write y equals the house. What was the initial? So if we're still looking at that function, y equals a b to the x, what's a going to be? Okay, what should B be? So B is usually the rate that, that it changes. What would that be? Okay, but that's going to make it a decay. And I need it to be a growth. So when we need something to be a growth, but it's not greater than 1, we stick a 1 in front of it. All that does is include the initial price. And we raise it to the x. Okay, how would we figure out how much it costs in 10 years? What would I write? Yes? Yep. Okay. Stick it in your calculator, guys. Let's find out what it is. Who's got it? Go ahead, Lauren. And 28 cents? No. You just get no cents? All right, you have to change your calculator then. Okay, so we go to our calculator. If we go to settings, by document settings to you need to um, show that it'll display up to six floating digits because you can say none or one. And then you don't get any decimal places. I already have that. Already. Okay, let's try it again then because when I do it, I get 28 cents. So I get 200,000 times 1.03 to the tenth. Nope, I don't get any decimal places in the all right, I feel like it should have decimals. When I did it the first time, I got 28 cents. We'll have to figure out which one's right later. Okay, so this is all about growth. Let's talk about some decay. Yes? Yeah. Okay.
nothing. If you have, if it's more than one, you're probably good. Okay. All right. We're going to skip all the way to number four. Okay. Here's another great real world problem. Um, you probably wouldn't use this for cough drops in yourself, but you might use this for medicine when you have kids. You can only give kids a certain amount. If they have too much, sometimes they throw up on you, and that's not fun. Or you have to take them to the hospital if they've had too many. Or they haven't had enough, and they wake you up 500 times a night. Not that this has happened to me in real life or anything. Um, that was sarcasm, by the way. So we're going to talk about this in terms of cough drops, but I want you to keep in mind... Probably you're not as worried about having menthol in your system as cough drops, but you might like cough syrup or something that has like a like codeine in it or something that your doctor gives you. Okay, you have a bad cough and have to attend your little sister's choir concert. You take cough drops that contain 100 megagrams of menthol in each straw. Every minute, the amount of menthol in your body is cut in half. You're going to write a function that models the amount of menthol in your body over time. Use X for minutes and Y for the amount of menthol in megagrams remaining in your body. So I want you guys right now to try to make that equation on your own. And then I'm going to ask you if you have it. Go. Okay, what'd you guys get? Y equals 100 times 0.5 to the X, where X stands for time, correct? Okay. It is safe to take a new cough drop after the levels of menthol in your body is less than 5 grams, how, megagrams. How long will it be before you can take another cough drop? Okay, so I want you to try to figure that out. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not as easy as the last one. It is a trick question. So think about how you would solve that. Okay, what'd you guys do? You can take a new one every five minutes, that is correct. And we did this by making a table. You did it differently? What'd you do? If you plug five into the calculator, that tells you how many minutes you can take it. So you have to be careful. Yes, but X stands for minutes, and it says you have to come up, up to five megagrams. So after one minute, you only have 50 in your system. After two minutes, you have 25 in your system. After three minutes, you have 12.5 in your system. After four minutes, you have 6.25 in your system. At five, you have 3.125 in your system. So after five minutes, you can have another cough drop. Second hour, I put hours by accident. Who has a cough drop every five hours? Okay. So you guys on your own, and then you're going to come up and check my answer, are going to try six and seven. I'm letting you know seven has a tricky part to it. And once you're done with that, you can start your homework. Okay, but I want you to try six and seven on this paper.